All right, if you'll go with me, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to give it to you in the New King James Version, the book of Exodus. We're going to be in the 33rd chapter, verse 18. Exodus 33, 18. When you're ready, say amen. The word of God says, and he said, please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. That is my foundational text. The title of my message is, Show Me Your Glory. Let's pray. Father, we come tonight, Lord, believing with an expectant heart that there's absolutely nothing too difficult for you. I pray tonight that you give your people ears to hear, eyes to see what the Spirit of the living God would say to them. Let, every, let their minds be clear and let them hear what your Spirit has for them tonight. And in the authority of that name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bind any and all hindering spirits and we say, Holy Spirit of the living God, have your way tonight. Amen. Have your way in a great way. There's people out here that need miracles. And you're still in the miracle working business. There's people that need healing. You're still the healer. Hallelujah. There's people that have backslid. But you're waiting for them to come on home. There's some that don't know you, Lord. And we... Uh, you provided for them to come to you and to be saved, to be born again. Hallelujah. It's in that name above every name that we pray, the name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Show me your glory. I was, um, you know, that's, that's a powerful statement. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. You know, when Moses asked God to show his glory, God revealed to him his character and his nature. The glory of God is the very character of God. God himself coming, revealing and manifesting himself. So God granted the desires of Moses and he revealed his glory to him. The glory of God is here, or the glory of God is being poured out. In Hebrew, the word used for uh, God's glory is doxa, which means all. Not some, but all that God is. Can I get an amen? Who wants more of God in their life, more of his presence? See, it also means all that God has and all that God uh, does. When someone says, oh, the glory of God is here, let me ask you a question, which is completely different, but it aligns with this. What are you praying for? What are you praying for? What if I told you that the life around you is the outcome of your prayer life? The life you're living now is a product of your prayer life. Not your salvation. That's been paid for. If you've received Jesus, you're saved. But the life that you're living around yourself, what if I told you that the life you're living right now is a byproduct of the prayers that come out of your mouth? What are you praying for? Are you praying for a new car? Are you praying for a new house? Are you praying for a new husband? Are you praying for a wife or for promotion? What are you praying for? Now here is one of the most radical prayers ever made. Moses, the great emancipator, the great deliverer, the great prophet of God. This is Moses who led Israel out of captivity. 
He made a radical prayer. He could have prayed anything. This is Moses that led Israel out of slavery. This is Moses that Jesus mentions. And he could have easily prayed, God, we are no longer slaves. Please accelerate the process. He could have prayed, God, get us to the promised land in a very fast way. He could have prayed for a thousand chariots in case Pharaoh's descendants came after them. He could have prayed for all of this, but this is what he prayed. This is what he prayed for. He didn't pray for a bigger tent, five-bedroom tent, two baths. He didn't pray for a Cadillac camel. Come on, somebody. He didn't pray for a gold rod. Moses prayed for this. These are the words that came out of his mouth. Show me your glory. Charles Spurgeon, one of my favorites, Charles Spurgeon was called the Prince of Preachers. He was in the 1800s in England. At that time, think about this, he had 30,000 members. That would make his church today about 70,000. He was a great preacher. But he said something that really impacted me. Charles Spurgeon calls this the greatest request a man has ever made to God is what Moses asked. Show me your glory. He didn't say not a new house, not a new car, not more money, not a new relationship, not more followers on Facebook. Come on, somebody. I'm hitting home now. But he said, show me your glory. See, life is a byproduct of what you pray for. Show me your glory. If we would really invite the presence of God or what Moses prayed for the glory. See, the glory of God is a manifested presence of God. The glory of God is the beauty of God. The glory of God is the visible, tangible presence of God Almighty. I want you to imagine the church of Jesus Christ. Not only in America, in America, but all over the world. You imagine if the church stopped fighting Baptists against Pentecostals, Pentecostals against Methodists, if they would stop all the nonsense and just say, God, show me your glory. Yeah. Revival would break out. Renewal amongst the saints would break out. If we just prayed from our hearts. God, show me your glory. I can't speak for anybody else, but I want his glory. Can I get an amen? amen? If we would invite the glory of God, it would show up. See, the glory of God is a byproduct of the grace and the mercy of God. Did you get that? It's a byproduct of the grace and the mercy of God. The glory of God is not a blessing. It's a fullness. The fulfillment. The faith. The faithfulness of the glory of God. I love this. He says, show me your glory. What that tells me is this. Your vertical request from you to God. Your vertical request determines your horizontal relationships, reality. Again, let me say it again. Your vertical request determines your horizontal reality. Your vertical life is a byproduct of the grace of God, but your horizontal life is a product of what you're praying for. So let me ask you once again, what are you praying for? There are things that won't happen in your life till you pray. Turn and tell your neighbor, you need to start praying more. And don't get mad at the delivery man. I didn't establish the rules, amen? See, God with his 5G network. If you're not connected to God's 5G network, you're not going to see the outcome you want to see. 
You can have the best iPhone in the world. And if your iPhone is not connected to the network, you're wasting your time. The iPhone 13 Max Pro is about a grand. But if it's not connected to the network, it won't work. See, you might have great purpose. You might have great dreams and great vision. But if you're not connected to the network, to God Almighty, that vision, that dream, that purpose will not become a reality. You're as good as your network. You're as good as your prayer life. Matthew 11, 24 and 22 says, you can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. That's a New Living uh, Translation. Here is the key. If you have faith. John 15 and 7. But if you remain in me, my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Again, the New Living uh, Translation. John 14 and 13 declares, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. So the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. He didn't say, I might do it. God said, I will do it. Jesus says, I will do it. Jesus is not saying, I hope to do it. He's saying, I will do it. Jesus did not say, I aspire to do it. Maybe I'll do it. If you act right, I might. Jesus said, you ask, believing according to his will, I will do it. Amen? So again, what are you asking God for? Are you asking for a new car, a bigger house? God does provide our needs. But our prayers also speak to our maturity. I've been uh, uh, under this man for many years, and I've learned a lot of things. And the biggest thing that I ever learned was this. He told me many years ago is to be balanced. It's no good if you're up here and then two weeks later you're down there and you're up here. He said, be balanced. Take the highs with the grain of salt and take the lows with the grain of salt. Can I get an amen? amen? You don't get it because sometimes our motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. The Bible says you can be praying, for, uh, you can be praying the wrong way. If you're praying for something that is not aligned with God's will, you will not get it. Well, what is the will of God? It's in the Word of God. And you don't know what His will is because you don't read His Word. I'm preaching to somebody. Maybe you're praying out of order. It's not necessarily wrong, but out of order. What do I mean? Don't ask God for a car if you don't have a driver's license. Don't ask God for a new relationship if you're still bleeding from your previous relationship. Don't ask God for influence if you lack integrity. Don't ask God for a new house if you have difficulties cleaning up your apartment. Somebody need to say preach. What are you asking God for? I'm showing God I'm ready for what he has in store for me. What are you asking God for? What you ask God for today will determine what you live out tomorrow. Show me your glory. Is there anybody here tonight ready for the glory of God? To put things in perfect alignment, the words that come out of your mouth matter. What are the words coming out of your mouth, in prayer and in general. So you messed up. Well, I'm a loser. I can't do this. I can't do that. You know what? You're prophesying over your own life. My Bible says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Through Christ, not through Mike Tafoya, not through this person, but through Christ. Can I get an Amen. 
See, the, the trip about it is, it's not just God speaking to us in dreams, but what comes out of our mouth activates heaven, moves heaven to show up on your behalf. That's why the enemy tries to distract you when you want to pray. All of a sudden, you get a text. Now, let me tell you something. If when you wake up in the morning and the very first thing you do is swipe your phone, then I'm here tonight to tell you you have things out of alignment. Then you have the audacity to ask God, why? Why, God, don't I see the breakthrough? Let me tell you why. Because your priorities are misplaced. You have the cart in front of the horse. You have the add-ons in front of the foundations. What are the, what's the foundation? Jesus Christ, him crucified and resurrected, hallelujah. That's the foundation. What are the add-ons? A wife, a husband, a car, a house. Those are the add-ons. Amen? Matthew gives it to us. Matthew 6 and 33 says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all, somebody say all, all. these things will be added. The word also says, delight yourself in the Lord. Not in Flacco, in the Lord. Not in Chewy, in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. But if you woke up in the morning and the first thing you do is say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. You're on track. Good morning, God. I want to ask you something. I don't want to be presumptuous. Is there anybody here ready for a radical shift in their life? Five people? Let me ask you again. Is there anybody here ready for a radical shift in their life? How many are here who really want to see what you've never seen before? You know what? We just have barely touched what God has. No joke, no hype. How many are ready to see what you've never seen before? How many of you are ready to occupy the very area that hell has fought you, has fought you to keep you out of. What do you think you go through? Because God has something for you. Amen? Is there anybody here ready to experience all the promises of God? Amen? That he has for you. Are you ready to shine? Like you never have before. Is there anybody ready to go to their promised land? We've been in the wilderness long enough talking about this and talking, but not believing, not seeing the manifestation, but having all to stand. You stand on the word. You confess the word. And sometimes it looks like things are getting worse. That's because they're about to get better. Come on, somebody. God's about to do something great and phenomenal. Can I get an amen? Is there anybody ready to be all that you can be in Jesus Christ? Are you ready to live a life where you no longer get stuck? Then you're about to make the prayer that Moses made. When the glory of God becomes your priority, when the glory of God is your heart's desire, when the glory of God becomes your foundation, when God's glory shows up, it is a visible, tangible manifestation of the presence of God in you, with you, and through you. See, the church is not this building. God don't hang out here. He hangs out in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Victor and a few other people believe it. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? 
you are going to see the glory shine on you like never before. Not only will it change you, God will use you to help other people. There are people that have seen you broken. They've seen you wounded. They've seen you discouraged and discombobulated. They saw you in your most desperate hour. But the next time they see you, I'm here as a witness to tell you that you will not be broken, you will not be busted, and you sure won't be disgusted. Come on, somebody. The next time they see you, you won't be bleeding. You will not be in the fetal position. The next time they see you, you will be shining with the glory of God all over you. My God, say this with me and say it loud. God. Show me your glory. You just ask God to fill your house. Second Chronicles 5 and 14 says this, the priest. Amen. Let me, I'm working with some fat fingers, so bear with me. The priest could not continue their service. Wow, that's heavy. Imagine Pastor Victor's up here preaching and we can't finish the service because of the cloud. For the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple of God. The glory of God does not caress. It fills. And that is why the priests could not continue their service. When the glory shows up, the glory fills. When you ask God to show you his glory, you're asking God, fill my temple. When you're filled with the glory of God, your negative thoughts cannot stay in your mind. Did you hear me? You got to get rid of that stinking thinking. Amen. When you're filled with the glory of God, the way you think is different. And let me tell you something else. The way you talk is different. Your mind has to be occupied with the spirit of the living God. You have to believe with me that your life is changing. Because your mind is filled with the glory of God. All negativity, not some, all must flee. There's a video out there that says you can be a Christian and have a spirit inside you that's not God. Now there's a difference with you battling the evil spirit and being consumed by it, right? These videos say you can be a Christian and have a demon living inside of you. Well, for me, that is out of alignment with the word of God. Let me make it clear right now. If you're a born-again Christian, and have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you understand that the blood, somebody shout the blood, of Jesus covers all our sins, that very moment in Romans 10 and 9, when you confess Jesus, the Spirit of God said, I'm no longer outside of you. I now live inside of you. Inside of you. You don't have religion. You don't have a doctrine. Amen? But what you do have is the Spirit of the living God living inside of you. And when the Holy Spirit is inside of you, there is not a demon or a devil from hell that can occupy that same space. Because it is a dwelling place of the Lord. When the glory of God fills, your, fills you, demons cannot come in. As a matter of fact, the Holy Ghost puts up a no vacancy sign. Amen. When the glory of God fills you, the thief cannot come in. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. So let me ask, are there any individuals here Filled with the spirit of the living God. Amen. When the glory fills you, it limits access. Amen. When the glory comes from Genesis to Revelations, demons are kicked out. When the glory comes, chains are broken. I said chains are broken. Devils are kicked out. By the time you get home, whatever was out of alignment with God, because of the glory of God is there, they're kicked out. I'm believing God right now that your temple, that your house, that your mind, that your family will no longer be filled with drama, 
anxiety, fear, generational curses, poverty, lies, brokenness, low self-esteem, and a lack of confidence. Amen. Amen. See, if the greater one is inside of you, you can do all things, not some things, all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen? I need you to get ready in the name of Jesus because God's glory is about to fill your house tonight. God's glory is about to fill your temple. God's glory is about to fill your family. Somebody say, show me your glory. How many of you believe that your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, etc., would be filled with the glory of God? I don't know if you understand this. You will see the glory of God fill every aspect of your life. How many of you can believe that the glory of God can cover an entire city? How many really believe that God's glory can fill up Banning, the uh, Chino, Pomona. Lord knows Pomona needs it. Ontario, the whole Inland Valley. How many believe that God can fill California from San Diego to the Oregon border? I don't know if you know what this means. We're going to see more salvations. Somebody say more salvations. We're going to see more healings. We're going to see more deliverances. We're going to see minds and families transform to the glory of God. How many feel, how many believe the glory of God can fill an entire nation? What if I show you a verse in the Bible that says, it's not a possibility, but a promise. You missed it. What if I tell you the Bible says the entire earth? Habakkuk 2 and 14 says, for as the water fills the seas, the world will be filled with an awareness of the glory of God. You all need to hear me. CNN, ABC, they've done a good job covering COVID. They've done a good job uh, covering uh, the war in the Ukraine. But you all need to get ready. Because the next thing you will need to cover, and it will be a thing you will not be able to deny, the next thing you will be covering is the glory of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See, the glory of God is getting ready to fill this nation. Show us your glory is a war cry of a committed Christian. If you make room for the glory, it'll show up. To me, when I was growing up, I believed a lot of stuff was made up. I doubted uh, God the Father, not Jesus. But when pe people would say that God spoke to them, I thought they were lying personally. I said, like, yeah, right. This was when I was young in the Lord. But one evening, a real intelligent, handsome man took me to Anaheim. Amen. And uh, convention center and a preacher from Texas he was a long way from me, and he called me out. I had no name tag, and he called me by name. This is what I said in my mind, as God is my witness. I said this in my mind. God, I believe in the gifts, and you know that. But are they true in this man's ministry? The man then goes on to tell me, Everything I thought. How can somebody read my mind? He said, you just ask God if the gifts of the Spirit are, are true in this ministry. I'm here to tell you they are. Then he called me up front. And there was a, a TV camera about five feet from my face. And he told me exactly what I saw in the vision that God gave me. God has called you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. A bald-headed Mexican boy from Pomona. And to lay hands on sick people and they will recover. You know, I've been high and I'm not bragging. On a, a lot of things before I was saved. The high that I received that night was tremendous. I felt the glory of God. I, I wish I could still be in it. 
felt like I can't even explain it. But it's something you want to live your whole life in. Amen? See, the glory of God, it was so overwhelming that I sobbed like a baby. I could sense his presence. And I'm still seeking that glory. Amen? Now Moses, we know, was before Jesus Christ. He was blessed in that he did not see God's face, but he saw his glory. You and me, we got no consolation prize, but we see the fullness of Jesus Christ in all that we do for the kingdom of God. We're not limited by the law because we're not of the law. We are of the grace of God that comes in the person of Jesus Christ. Show me your glory. It's a dangerous prayer. It will transform your life like no other prayer. You will never, ever, ever be the same if you're serious. If you want to stop being religious, if you want to stop playing church, and you want God to show up in your life and show off. The battle cry is show me your glory. If you want God, if you're serious about God showing you his glory, we're going to have an altar call, but you don't have to come up forward. You just stand up where you're at if you want God to show you his glory. And I wouldn't know why nobody would want to stand. So if you want God to uh, show you his glory, stand, please. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. You know what? Um, God is going to do some radical things in your life. You're going to trip on yourself in a week, in a month, in a year. You're going to say, what did that bald-headed preacher do to me? It wasn't the bald-headed preacher. I'm just the mailman. It was God Almighty. He touched your life. He touched your mind. Repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want you, God, to show me your glory. It's not a car I'm looking for. It's not a house, not a man or a woman, not more money. Right now, I'm saying you are the foundation. You are the priority. So God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Fill me to overflow. Now, if you believe you received that prayer, you give him a, 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 a clap of thanksgiving. Come on, church. Father, we thank you. We're thankful for what you're doing in this place and in your people. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I feel them up here. I could do part two right now. Except I just got the eye from Pastor Ridley. And uh, so bless God. Uh, y'all have a great week. You're all dismissed. Uh, we love you in this church. Uh, all the uh, pastors, all the staff. We think we got the best church west of the Mississippi. Maybe, probably even east of the Mississippi. Amen. The Lord bless you.